Well, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, wherever you are, curling fans. Uh, boy, I sound like the great Al Michaels. You know, do you believe in miracles? Uh, not so much for, for Canada, this Olympics. Uh, this is our special episode of Daily Draw for Friday, February 18th. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We've been doing this each and every day during the games in Beijing, and uh, today is no exception. Uh, Kevin, and Warren have been doing, Kevin and Warren have been doing yeoman's work. And uh, this show, by the way, fellas, uh, whether you realize it or not, is coming to you, uh, and the good listeners should know, it's coming to you from Vancouver, Edmonton, Toronto, and Sarasota, Florida today. Okay? The, the, the length we go to to bring you curling. Um, and it's don't, been, don't, don't forget Stanford, Connecticut. Okay. And st- <laughs> exactly. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, so Vancouver, Edmonton, Toronto, uh, Sarasota, and Stanford, five different places. Oh, my God. <laughs> We should just end the show right there. How's that for the effort? Uh, it's been a great run, uh, uh, you know, for uh, us to do this. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to keep doing it till till I guess Monday will be our, our last update, and we'll do a wrap up. Thanks a lot to Cool Bet uh, for sponsoring this. They sponsor everything curling, and frankly, all things ice related. Uh, the logo's a polar bear, after all. If you love sports, make sure you join the thousands of people already enjoying life inside the Cool Bet community, and this thing has caught fire, uh, that people love this, and uh, I, I love a little action on the game, so uh, this has been fantastic, and we're going to talk to the guy in charge of Cool Bet uh, later on in the show. Uh, this is the 10th day. Kevin, uh, by the way, am I, are, are you okay? Okay? I'm you hanging you in actually have been up all night, haven't you? <laughs> I, I, have He's got a, the... uh, I got up, my alarm went off at 10 o'clock last night, and uh, and I uh, just just walked back into the hotel, so we called games all night, and here we are, ready to rock and roll. You know, Kevin, Can't you, you see know, Warren, Warren, you probably uh, we've never <laughs> asked you, but I'm sure in your day with Heck Gervais, there had to be a few draws, Warren, that you had to hit the ice after being up all night. Well, I certainly know he did. <laughs> when, when he got away on us, which happened on occasion, uh, he did a couple of times make it straight from wherever he was to, to the curling facility. So, yeah, Hector did. <laughs> yeah, you're not, if you're any sort of athlete, you're not worth your weight in salt until you've stayed up all night to have to play a, another game. Uh, so 10th day of action for men's and women's four-person curling at the 2022 Games, of course. Uh, yesterday in Beijing, the men's bronze medal game was played. Uh, you probably know what's happened by then, but if not, well, we're going to give you an update on that. Uh, that was between Canada and the U.S. The semifinal in the women's side featured Switzerland and Japan, and the other one was involving Sweden and Great Britain. Kevin, uh, I know you're not losing track of the games you've covered, but uh, you bring us up to date on that. You covered the bronze medal game. Yeah, what a great game between uh, Canada and the U.S. Everybody's looking forward to it, of course. Two veteran skips. Both teams have won gold medals at the Olympic Games before, so you know it's going to be a, a heck of a battle, and it was. Uh, Brad Gushu came out of the shoot really well and grabbed a quick deuce. Then a couple of singles. Uh, U.S. comes back with two in the fourth to tie it up. In the fifth, um, U.S. allowed Brad. You know he's going to try to get a blank in five so he can have hammer in six, eight, and ten. Mm-hmm. standard gushu type practice um but brad on his last one open peel just blanket nosed it so then all of a sudden he's given he's one up but he's given the hammer uh to the u.s and six and supposedly eight and ten but anyway so in six uh u.s get a deuce so now they're one up with even ends like it's a dream situation in seven um the U.S. are lying one in the top eight foot with a chance to go into the four-foot circle. And, and, and you know you can't get the rocks anywhere near each other or Brad will have a go at the blank. And sure enough, comes up a little light and into the top 12 foot. And it's, there's a super difficult potential around the horn to, to blank. And uh, Brad takes it on and he makes it, not to my mind, it was probably the winning shot of the game. He makes that blank, and that, you know, I think that Schuster didn't have to go to the forefoot and try to steal a point. Just throw one to the open side. Brad draws for one, but then you've got hammer and eight. But he ends up le- allowing the blank and seven. Sure enough, Canada gets a deuce in eight, and then st- steals two more in nine. Chris Plies missed uh, three of his last four shots in the bronze game. So, you know, just uh, 
it was it was troublesome no question about that uh, actually uh to be even more exact actually chris missed four of his last six jim wow right so that was just too much and uh eight to five final canada big congratulations to brad gushu and his team for getting on the podium which is a huge huge thrill yeah um so as we know that's canada's only medal uh, kevin we've been kevin warren we've been talking uh for many many months now that it's uh you know the world is is coming to the uh you know they got skin in this game now the rest of the other countries it's not a it's not a shoe in for canada do we do we come away from this olympics warren saying uh this is the game changer how the other countries did and how we did not do well, I think the game changer started a long time ago. As you recall, 2018, Canada did not medal either, and we haven't done all that great, particularly in the women's side at the world level since then. So, mm-hmm. I mean, Canada's got to, I think, uh, readjust and reassess the entire setup, situation, everything they're doing. But it uh, be interesting to see if that happens. But I, I think Canada can be uh, still very dominant, but I think some things are going to have to change for that to happen. Right. Uh, Warren, you did the, uh, what game did you do? The women's semifinal. I did the Japanese-Switzerland game. Kevin did the basketball game on ice. Uh, but the <laughs> Japanese-Switzerland game was an interesting one as well. I'll, I'll start at the uh, at the fifth end because after the fourth, Swiss were leading 2-1. to one. But in the fifth, Alina Pats Rex on a front guard, leaves Japan a possible double for four. But Suzuki Fujiwawa executes a perfect double, scores four, and earns a 5-2 to two lead. At the halfway point, the Swiss third and skip were not playing very well. But on the Japanese side, they were averaging 92%. So they were, they were cooking. In the sixth end, Pats has a potential double to count as many as three. But the shot doesn't come up. She takes out one of these Japanese counters, but the Japan team still steals one and goes in front 6-2. to two. In the seventh, Japan makes a number of half shots, leaves Switzerland an open hit for three, and bingo. This time, Pats makes it perfectly, and now the Japanese lead by one, six to five. In the eighth, Japan is left with a draw to the, at least the eight foot, looking at a Swiss counter, makes it, scores now, seven to five Japan. In the ninth, Pats is left with a difficult come around tap back for two, makes contact with the Japanese stone, removes the shot rock, but rolls too far, and still gets one, however, the score is now 7-6 to six Japan going into the last end. In the 10th, ta- the Pats with her last buries as well as she can behind a guard. is about a foot off center. Fujisawa is left with a draw to the forefoot that she hangs just on the back of the four, only about uh, a few inches farther, and they would not have uh, made the, the count and wouldn't have got the 8-6 win. Game was well played by Japan. Their team average was 89%. Not so good for the Swiss. Pats and Terrazzoni at third and skip averaged only 74%, and uh, that was the difference in that game. However, there was another game on the ice that Kevin was covering, and uh, what a score, 11-11. Tell us about that one. (laughs) Yeah, it was chaos, but I do want to have a quick shout-out to J.D. Lind. He's been running the the program over in Japan for quite some time, Uh, a guy out of Calgary, um, a really nice fella, a really good curler in his own right, but he's really built that program. So congratulations, J.D. Lind, on getting, uh, getting that program built. And, uh, of course, uh, Tatsuki Fujisawa and company getting into the gold medal game. Huge, huge accomplishment for, uh, for Japan. Uh, the ratings uh, for the final are going to be yeah. absolutely astronomical, Huge. which is fantastic for our sport. Okay, let's talk about uh, the Swedish-Great uh, Britain game. Um, first end... Great Britain, I, 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 they didn't hardly make any shots. The guard was made, and then two other shots in the entire end. There were five zeros and gave up a four-ender to start the game. So you think, oh, well, that was fun. Game's over. Well, it wasn't quite over. Great Britain got three back in the second end, and then four Sweden to a single. So now it's only five to three after three. Great Britain gets one back, and they steal one in the fifth. So at, at the halfway point, it's 5-5. Five, five. It's a gong show. <laughs> it, in six, um, uh, Hasselborg has a, uh, a a nose hit with Hack for three, but elects to just play the pick, which was quite easy to pretty much guarantee yourself a deuce. So she took it, which was great. And then Eve makes a beautiful hit and roll in behind a couple of staggered rocks on the side, 
Anna goes to make a nose hit double, a tough shot. Doesn't quite make it. It's a deuce back. A force in eight by Sweden gets forced in eight. And then the ninth end, an amazingly complex four-foot mess. And uh, in the end, uh, Eve Muirhead makes an outturn angle raise slash for four wow. to go three up coming home. Coming home, so now it's over again. So early in the game, it was over for Sweden. Yeah. Now it's over <laughs> for Great Britain. And the field goal kickers are sharp today. Coming home, coming home, if you can imagine, there's only two ro- There's a, a guard and two Swedish stones in the house and a couple of kickers. That's it. Peel the guard. Nope. Here we go. Great Britain comes around, yeah. ends up not quite making it perfect, and a couple of great shots later, it's a three ball. So now we're going an extra end, for goodness sakes. Uh, and there's been two fours scored, two threes, two twos, wow. and four ones going into the extra end. Oh, cool. And, oh, it was crazy, Jimmy. Uh, the highest scoring game in Olympic uh, curling history, uh, 11-11, and Great Britain in the end. Doesn't have to throw her last one. Anna overcurled on her freeze attempt, 12 11 Great Britain is going to the gold medal game. Eve Muirhead, very, very happy for her. She's been f- trying for a long time to get to that gold medal game. And after winning, she's got a bronze in, I believe it was Sochi, where she got the bronze. But now here she is, guaranteed silver, but fighting for gold. It's going to be a great final. I'm really happy for both Fujisawa and Muirhead. Yeah, cool. Uh, and I took the over. By the way, uh, that a boy, Jim. Yeah, you were yeah. due. Yeah, Chris will be happy. Yeah, will be very proud of me. For people are going to start listening to me. So there you go. Curling now is turning. I don't into think a, so. Yeah, curling. I tr- I tried to get away with that. You wouldn't let it slip by. It weren't. Um, so curling now has turned into six point touchdowns if they convert it. Okay, now some of them are going to go for the two point conversion. Um, you know, all that being said, Kev, I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it with a bunch, a bunch of messy points. Uh, wh- wh- what do you think? Are you okay with it <laughs> well, or it not? Was, oh, sure. It was really entertaining. Yeah. We had some good laughs in the booth where you have to push the cough button because oh, it was just it was just so crazy. All the big scores and it was just wonderful from a fan's point of view or for us in the booth calling the games. You know, it's ought to be driving the coaches crazy. Like Wayne Madaw must have been losing his mind trying mm-hmm. to coach it. But <laughs> but what the heck? It was, and on J.D. Lynn, yeah, I'm sure they're scratching their head. But all good. Tie game, extra end, wonderful stuff. Yeah. I can imagine the poor coach going on the ice going, okay, here's how I'm going to coach you. Don't give up four. Okay, do not give up four <laughs> this end. Uh, sorry, just stand down. So, so we got all the games covered, Warren? Yep. Okay. Cool. Now we're going to uh, so now we're going to get your updates. Um, okay, boys. All that being said, I missed yesterday, so I don't know how you did yesterday. But uh, uh, what what are your what, what what's your update? How did you guys do? I picking I won yesterday, Jim. Oh, finally, Hanson, finally, because you're going to be two days in a row. Okay, two days in a row. We're going to win again today. Tell us. Let's what you go did. there. I can't right. wait. Okay, Kevin. Let's hear your picks. <laughs> <laughs> so I did really good. There are three games. Yes. USA Canada. I took USA. Wrong. I took Swiss to beat Japan. Wrong. I took Sweden <laughs> to beat Great Great Britain. Wrong. Oh no. Uh, I believe I did a Jimmy. I've got zero oh, and three. I I couldn't have been worse. I might as well have just picked him out of a hat. Yeah. Thanks for dropping in. You're, I love your wrong call. Now it's gonna. You know when we do this because we got this. This deal with cool, but it's going to be a gong now, Kevin, because so, you're going to go wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong. Yeah, it's going to be that. Uh, okay, uh, Hanson, you got the floor here. You got the floor. Well, Let's hear I, it. I was just one better, and I was watching that game last night between Canada and the USA for the first four or five ends, and half shot, half shot, half shot, Gushu one after another. I'm going, oh, my God, the USA is probably going to win this. Anyway, I did pick Canada, so I got that one right. But I was with Kevin on the other two, um, and I don't think anybody else would have would have picked other than Switzerland to beat Japan and and Swi- and uh, Sweden to beat Great Britain. But it didn't turn out that way. And well, the first time this week we were both wrong on those ones. So right. there you go. Okay, I'm one and I'm one and two, and Kevin is zero oh and three. 
So you, but you, you were letting on like you crushed him. Okay, you just won one more game. Uh, pipe well, down two over days, there, Hanson. Two pipe days down. in a row I won, for God's sake, Jim. You, you, that a you did. You did. Uh, okay, there you go, boys. Uh, now listen to this. Before the Olympics, Canada made a decision. We get a lot of input on this uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, before the Olympics, Canada made a decision that Canadian curlers in four-person curling could not play in the mixed doubles, but other nations allow their curlers to play in both. Two of the most notables to play were Bruce Mowat and Swedish third Oscar Eriksson. So both of them have made it to the medals uh, on the four-person side, and Oscar actually won a bronze at the mixed doubles. So I would say it, did, it certainly didn't impact uh, Mowat and Eriksson in a negative way. So, Kev, uh, what are your thoughts on this? I, I know we had Ben Hebert on uh, earlier in the week, and he was very outspoken to go, no, no, I'm, if I'm on a four-person team, I'm not letting my guys, I'm not letting my guys do the four-person. What are your thoughts on all this, Kev? Well, at Ben's age, he's probably right. As you get older, it'd be <laughs> hard to do both. But when, uh, when <laughs> yeah, boy. you're going to pay for that one. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's impacted Mr. Malwitt, uh or Mr. Erickson or Jennifer Dodds. Jennifer for that Dodds, sake. Yeah. She's she's in the final too. So um, there's absolutely no reason whatsoever that Canadian curlers shouldn't be able to play them both. I think it's been totally proven now. Mm -hmm. I don't know how how you could possibly argue it. Out of the four teams in the gold medal games, there is was only one female that played both, and that's Jennifer Dodds. She's in the final. Mm -hmm. And then two of the male players are in the gold medal game. So um, obviously that it just doesn't make any sense. Um, whoever's best, if you happen to have uh, either a, well, I can, a, a Gretzky, now you got um, Oscar Erickson, who's one of the best curlers in the world, mm -hmm. and Bruce Mallett, who's arguably the best curler in the world. If you happen to have those guys in your country, let them play. And, and Jennifer Dodds, great sweeper, you know, put on a show. I don't know. To me, it, it just doesn't make any sense. If you've got players of that caliber and they're good enough to play them both, why not pick up the extra medals? Why not? Yeah. You, you mentioned Gretzky. Yeah, you're right. You know, Gretz always used to go, to, just put me in. Just put me in. Yeah, put me in again. Put me in again. Put me in again. You know, so uh, good point by you. What do you. What do you think, Warren? I mean, you're the guy who yep. invented all this stuff. So I agree with Kevin fully. Uh, I mean, I look at other sports. Tennis, I look in the Olympics, the events like speed skating, and they're playing in different aspects, uh, runners, track and field athletes. I, I think it's uh, crazy to not allow people to participate if they're good enough and if they want to do it. And we've proven the factor here with, I think, besides the three people we've mentioned, the only other uh, person that played in both was Mozaner from Switzerland, I think, or from uh, Italy, Kevin, am I right? Anyway, so three out of four that played both ways have made it to the gold medal round. So that proves that it's not going to have a big impact on your performance in four person, I don't think. And there's another interesting thing will happen tomorrow as well. For the first time in Olympic history, curling Olympic history, a curler will win two medals in one Olympics. And that'll be Oscar Erickson, who won a bronze in mixed doubles, and he's going to get either a silver or a gold out of four person. So that'll be another first tomorrow. Well, maybe what we should do is go to Curling Canada and go, you know what? We're insisting that everyone plays <laughs> mixed doubles, okay? It's working for everybody else. Uh, good stuff. Um, so now the moment we've been waiting for, uh, if you've been listening to this show, uh, Cool Bet came on board uh, with us to sponsor our Olympic updates, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. And, uh, but, but no one ever thought, you know, the, all the traditional sports, of course, have been, you know, taking action for, for years and years about this. But Cool Bet stepped up, and now you can bet on curling games. And uh, the guy whose idea this was with a bunch of other people, who is the country manager... For cool bet chris abbott joins us how are you chris doing very well guys thanks for uh thanks for having me on i mean you've had a star-studded guest list and i'm I, I do this i seem to do this wherever i go i just sneak in and, and make myself a part of it so i appreciate <laughs> it thank you very much yeah uh, i'll tell you what i love that i love your business card country manager that's a strong title i i, I like that um at least somebody no at least somebody's managing this country right now huh how about that yeah 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 um good shot you look like, you look like uh, dana white there the guy from wwe doesn't he you guys you know the guy right yeah 
Yeah, you got yeah that there's a lot you. of us big guys with big heads and no hair and a gray beard. I, uh, <laughs> so yesterday I was told I look like Andrew Whitworth from the LA Rams, who won player of the year, in the, or sure. man of the year in the NFL. I've gotten Jay Glazer, who's also an NFL broadcaster. Yeah, there's a lot of us with the, with this look. Listen, when you don't have a lot to work with, you just got to gotta go with it. You got to get the, the shaved bald head. You got to get the beard and, yep. uh, and hope that people, uh, yeah, confuse you for somebody else. <laughs> Well, there you go. You you are now mine and Kevin's best friend, okay? Because uh, <laughs> Hanson gets to look, look at him. Okay, you, got the, you, you look like a chia pet. Well, Hanson. I'm you the only so one that o- I'm the only one who owns a comb. <laughs> I, I, I know you are, uh, Chris. We won't keep you too long. Um, this was totally interesting. That um, you know that that curling now is taking action. That you can bet on curling. I love it. Uh, I've always said, you know, it's it, you know it's always a lot more fun to have a f- couple of bucks when you play golf and to watch sports. Um, you know, to, to be able to have, you know, have a little fun and put some money down. Uh, I understand, Chris, when this started, that the, the viewership of the games uh, skyrocketed uh, and, and that a lot of people, six or 7,000 people, I remember, you know, were looking at these games and placing bets. Who came up with the idea, Chris, to look at this and say, okay, we, we got to be able to uh, bring in curling? For this like every other well sport. it's existed um in europe for a long time you know we've had uh, a guy with our company uh european he's in poland and he's he's well up on the the world championships and the european championships and they've offered odds on this for years and years and years uh, in canada it's it's you know the whole industry is is lagging behind but um you know it was it was you know nfl mlb you know the major sports nhl of course um but mm-hmm. but we saw definitely a, a a desire for curling and curling's made for betting um you know people like to bet hole by hole in golf you can bet end by end in curling it's a it's a great tv sport as you guys already know so you know it's the and the exposure i mean for the big events it dominates television in our country so why wouldn't you add in the you know the aspect of betting so i'll tell you a little quick story my first experience with betting curling didn't happen at a sports book at all it was at the remax center the st john's curling club it was the end yeah. of year fun spiel and uh, happened to be pals with uh, Jamie Korab. And Jamie was playing the game of ends, which was my first introduction to that, which for people who don't know, they, they a deck of cards and, and you get a number, a red or black card. And then if, if the, the, the corresponding color, you know, uh, matches the number on your card, you got to buy a round of beer for everybody. So I was really lucky or unlucky on my first night there, and I had to buy a lot of beer. And I was like, "Man, this is this is exciting." And and you know, fast forward a few years later, um, that was one of the things that drove me to think, you know, this this is a fun game to bet on, and people are into it, and and you can live and die with every shot. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, walk us through um, what's interesting to me, uh, because I do like the action. Um, how do you how do you come up with the odds for all this stuff? I mean, I know the over unders were twelve. Uh, that if you bet over the whole week, you probably did well. Uh, betting per end, uh, setting these odds, how, who does it sure. for you? So um, we set out once we decided we were going to really get involved in curling to to find somebody who had a math and statistics background, also had a curling background. So we ended up hiring mm-hmm. Matthew Hall, who is a former junior champion. Uh, Plays with the uh, with the Cam Rink uh, here in Ontario, uh, okay. yeah. we're university champion. So Matt's got a stats degree, obviously a curling interest, um, and he actually came to us when we started offering odds and said, you know, you can do better than <laughs> than what you're doing. And and to be honest, the first event that we did, we kind of got exposed because people in the know knew when we had mistakes up there. So um, yeah, so we we went and hired Matt, and he's basically our full time you know curling odds maker. He does some other stuff as well. But, um, you know, he does he does a fantastic job. We've already got odds up for the Briar. He had them out as soon as the, the field was announced. And, yeah, it's it's been something that's that's been really popular. And, and we're happy to be a leader. Like, we know that there's other companies out there that, that come in and they, they see that we've created the odds and they steal them verbatim. How do I know that? Right. Because when we make a mistake, they post the same mistake. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it, no, that happens in the industry. But if you have a, you have a company that's, that's first to market and is a leader – um, you know, you get a little bit of credit that way. So we've been uh, we've been really fortunate, uh, really happy with with how things are going, and we only look to expand our uh, our curling coverage as we go forward. Yeah, cool. I'll bring Kevin in here in a sec. One more question: What's everyone betting on in curling? What's what's is is there a 
a sort of go-to bet? Yeah, there's the a go-to bet. People love just to bet multiple favorites and parlay them in a ticket. And as you guys just pointed out, you went 0-3 and, and 1-2 and yesterday, and we love to see that because on a, <laughs> on a, on a parlay <laughs> ticket, eventually somebody's going to mess you up. You know, you have to win every single one of them. So the first thing I'd recommend to people is stop betting parlay tickets. It's great for the book, bad for business, but I right. want to tell people as a you know, stop betting parlays. Bet the single game. It doesn't give you the right. big, exciting payout but it's a more profitable strategy. Um, and you can also... Yeah, and I will agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Par- parlay, by the way, folks, is when you do make one bet, but you got to pick more than one team. Yeah, you need multiple right? outcomes Two, to happen. And, and how many times this, this Olympics did you guys get all your picks right on a given day? Wrong, as Kevin would say. Wrong. <laughs> well, you know, we were, we were pretty close a couple yeah, listen, times. Listen, that is the gambler it. attitude, and I love to hear it. Wow, well, you know, if this had to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You won't believe it. I won three and I lost the fourth. No way. I can't believe it. Go ahead, Kevin. Oh, well, one, I, I'm not a gambler. So, at, 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 uh, but not yet. When something, yeah. when something <laughs> happens, like in the mixed doubles, where a team that wins that you're really not expecting, in this case, Italy, which is great that they did, and, and we've congratulated them wholeheartedly. But from the betting side of things, when a team that probably would be, out of the 10-team field, maybe ranked 7th or 8th, what, what does that mean to a better? say I'm putting $100 down, because <laughs> um, I, I simply don't, I'm not a better. Um, what, what does that mean to me? I don't. I can't remember what the exact odds were, but I think they were the longest shot in the field. So if you bet $100 <coughs> on that team before the tournament started... You probably would have turned that into eight or ten grand, to be completely honest. Like they would have had seventy, oh, wow. eighty, yeah. That their odds would have been pretty high. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's interesting because not many people do. If they're the, if they're the biggest underdog, you know, people don't usually bet on them. People bet on you know the top two or three right. favorites, and they think, well, if this team is you know fourth on the list and their odds are yeah you know, four or five to, or eight to one or ten to one even you know maybe i get a little bit of value there you don't get a whole lot of bets on the on the 80 or 100 to one long shots so it would have meant uh you know a little nice vacation for you and your family i guess if you had to put a hundred dollars <laughs> down on it yeah. but uh yeah not not a lot of people would have done that for sure but i mean that's the excitement of it you know you hear about all these betting right. underdog stories um you know i go back to one the, the one that stands out the most to me is the st louis blues stanley cup a few years ago at Christmas, they were dead last on the odds table at about 85 to 1, and then they came back and won. So some people did did, did well with that. Um, but, yeah, that's, you know, that's just, it puts uh, – I, you know, I heard you guys use the, the term skin in the game uh, a little bit earlier, and that's what it does. It makes, uh, it makes something that you may not have watched before um, very, very interesting. So I think that it can also bring new eyes to the sport for people who maybe weren't, uh, you know, as focused before as well. Right. Hmm. I, I love the long shot. I'm, I'm, I'm your best customer, <laughs> believe me. Yeah. Warren? Yeah, great, Chris, to have you on with us. Thanks for joining us. A um, couple of things. First one that I'm curious about. So in curling, we have this, quote, tradition, <laughs> where people can concede a game before the regulation time actually falls into place. How does that impact the, the betting oh, world? Oh, it drives some people crazy. But um, what you have to do when you, when you, when you have a betting website or, or you know, <laughs> a standalone casino or whatever, when you go to Las Vegas, there's some house rules. Um, so, you know, for curling, uh, whatever, you know, if, as long as it's within the rules, whatever the posted score is by the, by the organizer, by the governing body, that's the end of the game. So, you know, I've had it happen before where, uh, you know, you bet over 12, but at some point it's nine to one and, and there's still a bunch of ends left and you're like, oh, this is going to happen for sure. <laughs> Next thing you know, they're oh, shaking no. hands and the TV feed is switching to another sheet and there you go. That's, you know, <laughs> that's, that's the game you play. But um, yeah, so, you know, for, for curling and, and for pretty much any sport, yeah, whatever the, the final score is, no matter how they get there, as long as it's within the rules, then, then that's how it is. And, and there's, okay. there's a term called a bad beat and there's plenty of those to go around. Well, interesting. So the sport of curling, this is uh, more or less kind of, a, kind of your first foray into it to any large degree. Did you see the increase in betting over the last couple of weeks with the Olympics and our show and that type of thing? And sort of how do you see 
betting with curling going in the future? Well, first of all, definitely. And, and the fact that you guys have been been talking about winners and losers and, and all that. I mean, we've had a great relationship with the folks at Sportsnet and now by extension through you guys. So it's been fantastic. Uh, I think it's been an absolutely wonderful partnership. So yes, we have seen the excitement. We've seen, you know, people talking on social media when when you guys post your clips about, about wins and losses and, and I'm going to bet on this or that's a bad bet. So all that is uh, all that is really exciting. And for the future, I mean, you know, we are, we're dialed in here and we want to offer odds on as many events as possible. So it started, it was just, you know, World Championship, Olympic, Scotty's Briar. You know, and we, we mixed in the curling trials. Now you try, we try to do some of the Grand Slams. Anything that's that's getting coverage, uh, we want to offer odds on it. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's going to be more, if that answers the question. Like, the the idea <laughs> is to get, get, as much, get as much out there in terms of... Uh, in terms of coverage and I think that's you know it's good for I think it's good for the sport I think it's I think if you look at sports like um, or, or leagues like the National Football League once you know gambling has always yeah. been a part of what they do and now they finally embraced it because they realized the eye the eyes and the attention and all the daily fantasy stuff and and it's you know if you're not a gambler you still have to notice that your your traditional broadcast has changed they're talking about odds they're talking right. about where the money's going um, so, you know, you mentioned Dana White, if you watch a UFC fight now, they're talking about the odds with the fighters, which not really something that ever mm -hmm. would have happened before. So, uh, it's coming, I think, whether people really like it or not. Um, sometimes it's a little overexposed. I actually, I actually wish there was a little bit less of that, but, um, yeah, it's, well, um, it's, it's certainly something that's, that's, you're going to see more of in the future. Right on. Great. Hey, curling. Hey, curling world. There's a new sheriff in town and it's called cool bets. Okay. Uh, Chris Abbott has been our guest. We really appreciate this, Chris. Um, I'm wondering if you have a feature. Uh, do, do you get a little bonus like frequent flyer points if you frequently <laughs> lose? Okay, do I get a free bet somewhere, Chris? Okay, that's what I need from you guys. Absolutely. Um, just just check hey. your email. Check your email. We certainly uh, send out promotions uh, from time to time based on customer segments. Uh. And uh, the, the, the repeated loser is certainly a customer segment that we look after. <laughs> Right on. Uh, well, thanks. We've been doing it each and every day on this and, and making picks. And uh, and we really appreciate you coming on board with this. Thank you to CoolBet for supporting curling. And I know it's going to be a long relationship. Uh, Chris, thanks for joining us uh, this morning. And uh, I'll be calling you. Okay? I'll be calling you. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. My pleasure. Take it easy, My Chris. My pleasure. We're, we're transparent. So if there's any, ever anything I can do, you guys just let me know. Great. Thanks a lot, Chris. Well, thank you very thank much, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Uh, there you go, boys. Something to think about. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's. Uh, how about a guy who owns a a, a betting company? Uh, I feel like I've met a new best friend. Okay, I'm gonna get close <laughs> to this guy. We'll be right, we'll be right back. Speaking of picks, we got to look at those and what else is happening. Stick around. Uh, well, welcome back, everybody. Um, what a, what a, get it? What a cool guy. Do you get it, Kev? Do you get it? What a cool guy, Chris Abbott is. Uh, okay, you bet he's cool. But, yeah, you. Uh, there you go. You bet uh -huh. he's cool. I, I look. <laughs> Household Express. Good God, you started. You bet he's cool, Kevin. They're going to change their logo. And the lizard, you're on fire. Okay, you've come up with a bunch of stuff. Uh, the lizard, by the way, is uh, Warren because he has six or seven screens. And Kevin pointed out that he can dart around and look at all the all the laptops that he has going. Uh, so again, thanks a lot to Chris Abbott from Cool Bet for coming on. So let's get to your picks, boys. Uh, we've got a couple of games coming up. The men's gold, of course, is Sweden and Great Britain. Uh, how's Great Britain doing? Men and women. How are they doing right now? <laughs> oh, okay, wow. that country. Um, and the women's bronze game is between Swiss and Sweden. Uh, let's go to the gold medal game. Who's doing that, Kev? You're going to give us your prediction? You both are, but you go first. Okay. Well, you know, that is obviously really tough to pick. Both teams are on fire, but somebody has to win. And uh, so I'm going to pick Great Britain to win that game. Um, but would it surprise me if Sweden won it? No, but... I'm going to pick. I'm going to stick with uh, Bruce Mallett because, boy, are they curling good. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about you, Warren? Well, I'm afraid I'm not going to differ much from Kevin. I know Aden and that team have been lights out, but uh, the buzz saw Mallett. Um, <laughs> he's going to come in probably at about 94% in the game, which he has in just about every game. So if you've got a skip that's shooting that kind of percentage, they're going to be really, really difficult to beat, even though Aden will probably be not far behind him. But I'm going to have to go with Great Britain as well. Yeah. Now what am I supposed to do, Kevin? Okay. <laughs> uh, if I went with you early in the week, you're fantastic. 
And then you you took a dump <laughs> yesterday, Jim. Yes, I did. I'll give you some advice. Take Sweden. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go backwards and take Sweden. Okay. The women's bronze, Swiss and uh, Sweden. Warren. Wow. Well, I would have thought uh, 24 hours ago these two teams would be talking about playing in the gold medal game. So a big surprise for us this morning with both of them. Hasselberg, she's done some funny things this week, but I mean, I I, I watched the. Uh, Swiss game, uh, Pats and Terrazzoni, and they look like a deer in the headlights uh, from about the third end on. So I'm thinking probably Anna Hasselberg will get it together, so I'm going to go with Sweden. Okay. Kevin? Well, just to make it fun, because I don't know either on this one. They're they're completely even, those two teams. I'll yeah. certainly go with, uh, with the team from Switzerland. And... Uh, but boy, it's going to be a tough one to pick. These are great games. What good matchups, you know? And uh, but wonderful stuff to watch. And it was sure fun calling the uh, the game earlier today. That uh, twelve eleven rocker. So this should be a good one too. I'll take Switzerland. Okay. I Very think good both point. those games earlier today would go under the uh, category that we talked about a couple of days ago. Curling wasn't that great, but they're really entertaining. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll tell you why Cool Bet loves me when I make a bet. Here's what I'm picking for both the gold medal games Italy oh, and Denmark. We... Yeah, get in there, Jim. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're going to send a limo for you to place bets, buddy. Uh, so there we go. Uh, congratulations uh, to Jennifer Jones, though, and Brad Gushu. Uh, you know, we had this really interesting tweet from uh, Rachel Holman, right, where she said, You don't realize I'm, I'm speechless and I'm almost in a dark place. You know, how, how disappointing it was for her. And uh, it is quite an accomplishment, Kevin, to go to the Olympics, you know, regardless of how you do. Um, you, well, you went yes. through it, Kev. You've got to be proud if you get there. Oh, absolutely. Don't no, Enjoy it, time of your life. And, and everybody can't be on the podium. There's only room for three. And uh, sometimes you're, you just don't, don't make it, and that, that's okay. But uh, the right. teams did well. I'm really proud of Brad Gushu. He, uh, he really played uh, an amazing bronze game. I didn't know if they'd be able to to come back after such a devastating loss, but boy, they did, and uh, good on them. Yeah, and congratulations to you, Kev, gold medal winner. And Warren, to you, uh, people don't understand, if they haven't been listening, that you were the guy who got curling into the Olympics, and you've written a book about it, Sticks and Stones, and it's all about curling and the Olympics, correct? Yes, it is. Uh, I won't take full credit for that, Jim. I was one of about five people that were very involved in getting curling into the Olympics. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ray Kingsmith from Calgary and I were the two guys that initiated it in the early 80s to get it into Calgary in 88. So I was part of that whole thing, and Sticks and Stones tells the whole story. So, cool. yeah, this is, uh, this is always an interesting time for me because of the struggle we went through for almost 10 years to get curling accepted and then to be able to watch it is uh, pretty amazing. Right on. We're going to do it a few more days. Kev, you hang in there. Warren, you hang in there. Uh, with, with, there's a few more days left in the, in the games and lots of curling uh, to watch. So uh, we look forward to that. Thank, uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. The show drops uh, every day until uh, the end of the games at about 1 o'clock. And then, of course, we're, gonna, we're back to doing our weekly show uh, on Monday or Tuesday uh, next week. So thank you again, everybody, and thanks to Cool Bet. They are a proud sponsor of curling and, frankly, all things ice-related. The logo is a polar bear after all. That'll give it away. If you love sports, make sure you join the thousands of people already enjoying life inside the Cool Bet community. So if you feel so inclined, do what I do. Uh, get over there to the website and lay down some bets on curling. Uh, reminder, we'd love to hear from you inside curling at gmail.com. Uh, you can drop us a line. Uh, check out our Facebook group and our Facebook page. Rod Paulson has been looking after that for us. Thank you very much. Uh, and we do read your emails. And uh, we have a contest. If we do read your email, Warren, they're going to get an e-copy of your book, correct? That's correct. And, man, have we been getting uh, emails the last couple of days. So right keep on. them coming, but it uh, gives me something to do for sure. Drop in. Uh, who better? As uh, We've always said, who better to ask questions and uh, to Kevin and Warren, our two World Curling Hall of Famers, and who worse to uh, ask questions? Uh, Kevin to give you his picks for curling. He's no good anymore. <laughs> I going, had a tough day. Oh, Yeah, you did. A, <laughs> tough day at the office. Yeah. I'll nap. tell you what's not a tough day is me. I'm going golfing, okay? I'm going golfing. We'll talk, we'll talk to everyone again tomorrow. Take it easy, boys. See you later.